Good afternoon. You're listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. I'm your host, Dolores Weller of the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition, also known as CVAC. And this program, Clearing the Air, covers air pollution issues in the San Joaquin Valley and brings you interviews with individuals who are at the forefront of air pollution policy, advocacy, and research. And our show airs every fourth Friday at 3 p.m. and is hosted by CVAC, um, which is our coalition is basically a partnership of more than 70 member organizations throughout the valley and state and we're unified by our commitment to to creating clean air here in the san joaquin valley and we've been around since 2003 so um it's a pretty uh solid movement and we we like to bring this this show to you once a month um and today we're going to be talking about a, a topic that sort of evolved as we've been talking here on our show i think our last show we we talked a little bit about um ag waste in particular and and all of the the impacts um uh, on air quality and some of the discussions so i brought some experts on on the show to talk about um ag waste from my perspective that's my my priority but also soil health and and we obviously live in an agricultural area and that's very important here and how soil health can really impact our um our air quality positive and, and negative both so we have Janaki jagannath um here in the room and she is the coordinator for the san joaquin valley sustainable ag collaborative on the phone, we have uh, Nick Lapis, who is the Legislative Coordinator for Californians Against Waste, and Neil Edgar, who is a Senior Project Manager for uh, Edgar & Associates. So could each of you quickly just tell listeners you know, what your organization is all about before we get started? So I'll start with you, Jonike. Sure. Thanks, Dolores. Thanks so much for having me on the show today. Um, my name is Janaki Jagannath again, and I'm the coordinator for the San Joaquin Valley Sustainable Agriculture Collaborative. And we're a recent collaboration between uh, seven different member organizations that predominantly focus on environmental justice, but who have come together to examine agricultural and environmental policy and the way that it impacts the people who are most burdened by California's food system. So our member organizations include folks who work on water-related issues, both quantity and quality, land use and transportation, um, as well as access to um, clean and clean living environments and farm worker communities uh, and food access. Great. And Neil, can you tell us about Edgar and Associates? Well, Edgar and Associates is an engineering and lobbying firm here in Sacramento, and uh, bulk of my work is related to um, uh, the California Compost Coalition. Mm -hmm. I'm the executive director. We represent about half of the composting capacity for commercial composters here in California, uh, working on developing some of the policies that are uh, helping to promote additional composting and removal of organic materials from landfilling, as well as the policies uh, and regulations that go along with uh, siting and permitting facilities. Great. So you're definitely here representing uh, California uh, Compost Coalition, which you stated. Um, and, and Nick, how about you? Thanks for having me on. Uh, I am Nick Lapis with the Californians Against Waste. We're a statewide environmental organization. We're a membership-based group. Uh, founded in 1977, we've been in the middle of uh, most regulatory and legislative policy on waste reduction. So everything from the state's uh, beverage container deposit law to uh, more recently legislation on electronic waste. Uh, we sponsored the state's plastic bag ban a couple of years ago, and we sponsored uh, most of the recent legislation about diverting organic materials from landfills uh, to composting facilities, anaerobic digesters, and other good uses. Great. Well, thank you uh, to all three of you for being here. I think we all um, can can really contribute to, to a good conversation. So before we we dive into some specifics, Jonicky, do you want to kind of give us a an overview or of, of some of the the issues here in the valley that that really kind of set this, the the stage for what we're talking about today in terms of soil health and air quality. Sure. Um, 
So we're here today, of course, to discuss uh, waste and waste diversion and the way that it uh, it coincides with some of our um, soil health goals for California. And I thought in, you know, in order to look at it through a valley perspective, it's important for us to also look at the history of California agriculture and where we are today uh, in our orchard production. And um, I think uh, as we're getting into this discussion today, uh, we, it's important for us to remember how our agricultural industry has transformed towards a, an incredible amount of orchard production of almonds and pistachios, which is uh, n not necessarily something that we've historically done in the state. Today, we produce uh, 953,000 tons of almonds, which uh, constitutes about 83% of the world's commercial almond production. Um, um, that's about 320,000 hectares of California is, is covered in almond orchard today. And in, although we have traditionally grown many row crops in California, today with this level of orchard production, we have um, a situation where we're producing an incredible amount of woody bio waste that comes from uh, this orchard production. And um, I know that almonds in particular have been uh, in the media a lot with their water use and there are varying uh, you know responses to our orchard production today and it's covered in, in different layers of politics but when we remove the those layers we also have to remember that almond trees are well, they're trees, and they're doing the important work of cycling CO2 out of the atmosphere, holding it in their structure, and ultimately can contribute to putting that carbon back into the soil, depending on the way we work with those trees um, after their production cycle is over. Um, and here in the Central Valley, we experience a, you know, accelerated climate change impacts and exacerbated health impacts of climate change. Um, as we know, those of us who, who work in environmental justice communities are well aware um, that that's because of not only a concentration of heavy industry and agriculture, but also because of the impacts of, of what we call short-lived climate pollutants, including methane, uh, F-gases, and black carbon, which is something that is a product of combustion of, of, of material, including woody material. Uh, and in this case, we're here discussing bio waste, uh, the incineration and the burning of um, all of those trees that come off of these orchards. So um, I'm hoping that, you know, as we get into hearing from some of our uh, our goals around uh, soil carbon sequestration from the other folks on the show today, um, that we are, are sort of remembering the expansive scale of our orchard production and both the opportunities that are presented by the fact that we have these man-made forests on basically all across California, as well as some of the issues that we have around dealing with it as a health issue, as a health problem for our most impacted communities. Great. And I, as I mentioned earlier, um, we have talked about this, and this is kind of involving a conversation that we've had. Um, and it's a lot has been developing at our, our local air district. Um, you know, obviously we're concerned about the air pollution impacts. And um, so our local air district um, and our, our local growers have relied on uh, these biomass facilities here throughout the San Joaquin Valley um, that have been taking in the woody waste that Jonicky was mentioning. And uh, so these facilities over time have, have ran out of their renewable energy credits and are looking um, for support to, to maintain themselves, to continue bringing in the woody waste from our local orchards. Um, and so there is an opportunity for you know, a broader discussion about alternatives here. And um, so we, we want to see that, uh, you know, proposed. We want to see that discussed at the same level as, you know, just renewing ener energy credits, for example, um, to these, these biomass facilities. We've, we've told the Air District, myself and coalition members, biomass facilities, you know, are usually located in environmental justice communities. We've opposed legislation to support, um, you know, the biomass facilities. We need to be looking at alternatives. 
And uh, I know that there are some long-term strategies that our local air district has on healthy soil, but it's definitely not as, uh, you know, with any short-term solutions uh, for growers. And uh, listeners might be interested in knowing that because of some of these facilities have shut down, um, there has been some additional um, new uh, open burning allowed. Um, I think there were about over 100 acres of waste burned um, in throughout the valley in just the past three months, I believe. Um, and they were they were issued uh, permits for burning due to you know not having the access to a, a biomass facility. So now is the time to have those conversations, and that's something that you know we will be doing together. And um, so that's you know what we hope to talk about today, and what are the the alternatives? Because what we hear is that the alternatives they they exist, but they're not at the scale that needed for you know you, you're talking about these man made forests here in the valley, and so you know the conversation seems to stop there. Like we there are alternatives, but they're not at the capacity they don't that you know to withstand um, you know the levels of, of waste that we have here. So how do we get around that? That's what I'm I'm hoping that we can we can talk about today and what are the benefits for our, you know our soil and 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 all of that for you know our the alternatives. Um, what are some of the 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 alternatives, Jonicky, as well, opposed to burning and biomass? So currently there is quite a bit of study taking place on uh what we call orchard recycling, which is essentially mowing down these trees. <clears throat> and incorporating the woody waste back into the soil uh, and leaving it there. And it has many benefits. We've seen uh, a recent study that came out of uh, the University of California, Davis, showing that actually over the course of three years, an increase in yield from trees that are planted um, it, it into soil that has that has been uh mulched and that there's actually increased water holding capacity and nutrient holding capacity in that soil after trees are um, basically ground up and put back into the soil and you know that's uh, that doesn't require uh, a great deal of science to know that those that that carbon increased carbon in the soil is going to be beneficial that's a practice that's been done by people around the world for thousands and thousands of years but our industry uh, has come very far to the point that these large-scale farms have for the most part found it most economically viable to simply remove the trees after 25 years or 26 years of production uh, and cart them off uh, to a facility to have them incinerated and unfortunately what that does is it it is actually long term could be considered a poor economic choice for the farmer because uh, you know they're putting in a lot of pesticides and fertilizers and uh, and capital into their land to grow those trees and then to just simply remove that wonderful carbon stock um, that could really go back into the soil and, and provide a long-term benefit um, uh, we're just kind of beginning to see that uh, the economic alternative here in, in the sense that it makes more sense to keep that tree uh, where where it is and to keep all the water and, and chemicals that potentially went into that tree on the land. Um, so orchard recycling is one of those options. And in order to achieve orchard recycling, one of the, our main barriers is that the machinery required to uh, actually conduct the process of mowing down those trees uh, is it's not easy to come by. There's really only a, a few different machines that are capable of handling that load um, to literally, you know, like a lawnmower across an orchard, really go and, and take down these mm -hmm. massive trees, grind them, and, re and return them into the soil with as little energy as possible. And... Um, so one of those is called the Iron Wolf. It's a an, it's an enormous machine, um, you know, basically with a locomotive style engine, mm -hmm. and uh, it's there are very few of them. It was actually designed to break up um, concrete, and mm. that's a that's the kind of energy that's required to do this job. And so it exists out there, but it's very expensive. And that's that's what we're hearing is the economics of it. Um, and if you're just joining us, this is KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. Uh, you're listening to Clearing the Air. And we are talking about soil health 
ag waste and how that impacts our, our air quality. And we're talking to jo- Jonike Jagannath with the San Joaquin Valley Sustainable Agricultural Collaborative and Neil Edgar from uh, California Composting Coalition and Nick Lapis from Californians Against Waste. And um, you know the economics is is where we you know we we seem seems like the conversation is is stopping. We've heard uh, at our local air district, um, you know that farm growers are given are paid for their waste with when the biomass was at their full speed these biomass facilities were actually paying growers to give them their waste and and burn it Um, while that's cleaner than open burning it's still not the cleanest possible solution out there and like i said they're placed in in environmental justice communities as well and a lot of them our uh, colleagues have found that they have they're always out of violation um and um, so the economics, that piece of it, I know we've heard growers say that, um, you know, they would have to pay a chipper or pay for a particular type of equipment, as, as you mentioned. Um, and so since it's not economically feasible for them, then they go ahead and apply for a a permit, a burning permit at the air district. And I've, I've heard, and I don't necessarily believe this, but I've heard that the air district is saying that they're issuing permits at a certain cost comparable to that, you know, to chipping it or, you know, sending it to that type of facility. Mm-hmm. But um, that's, you know, we're yet to see if we're going to continue seeing that, that pattern of, of more burning and, you know, no alternatives really supported. Um, but do you, do you know of facilities in the Valley that, that do the chipping and that are like, a, you know, aggressively working to kind of fill that hole with growers or do you, do you get that it's just, it's not economically viable and so it's not being pursued? Uh, well, we're certainly seeing it be pursued and, and not necessarily orchard recycling in mm-hmm. the uh, sense that I just outlined, yeah. but more just the chipping of these trees and then using a manure spreader, which is just a huge uh, implement on the back of a tractor to just spread all of those chips back over the land. Um, I don't know of studies right now that show sort of carbon sequestration, um, uh, the the qual the impacts on soils and so forth of that practice Mm -hmm. but we're seeing that that's sort of the practice that's being used by a lot of large growers right now in the absence of the biomass option Mm -hmm. Um, and driving down the 99 you can see that i mean just going um, from here down from here in fresno all the way down to uh, past bakersfield you'll see large piles of chips that are um, being spread out over over the fields Mm -hmm. and so that's I mean, that's not, I mean, what is, what do you think about that particular practice as you're taking, you know, you're chipping the material and putting it back into the soil? I mean, that's something that you obviously support. Yeah. Um, so it's just being spread on top. I'm mm-hmm. not actually sure kind of what farmers are doing, whether they're incorporating that. Mm-hmm. We know that that takes more passes of a tractor to mm-hmm. um, incorporate that and it, you know, it takes additional um, uh, equipment to do that. And I think, you know, a reason why uh, that hasn't been sort of promoted as a as an option is that there is relatively quick volatilization of that carbon mm. when it's just spread on top. Um, right. It requires a certain decomposition uh, process mm-hmm. and a few years, you know, to actually um, help create fertility from that matter. And um, maybe, you know, that's something that the folks on the line will talk about in terms of composting and Mm -hmm. making those uh, actually making that woody mass and and other waste uh, a really good soil nutrient um, input into the soil Mm -hmm. great so there are there are some options but it sounds like there's a lot of education that that um, needs to be done for our local growers and also we need some of our agencies like our local air district and statewide agencies to really support growers in in, um, moving towards some of these alternatives um, so we're not just having the conversation about open burning or or biomass and um, um, we've been pushing at our local air district to to have that that conversation there they've been lobbying dc with 
other issues and we've you know talked to them about you know carrying that message as well as they're trying to you know seek renewable uh, energy credits for the biomass industry to also um, look for support on and uh, providing support to our local growers for alternatives um, so Neil and Nick I want to turn to you to you both now and um, since you you have kind of a, a, a broader uh, perspective um, how, do, how do you think we can incentivize this? You have a lot of experience working with legislators and statewide agencies on, on the bigger picture, and I'll, I'll let um, either of you, you take a stab at this, but um, what are some of the, in, how can we incentivize um, you know, sequestration of, of carbon and some of these sustainable practices here in the Valley? Sure, this is Nick from uh, Californians Against Waste. And uh, I think you're, you're spot on in terms of the need to return this organic material to the soil. Um, we definitely need to take the carbon that we're stripping from the ground and instead of putting it out into the atmosphere, find a way to return it back and actually use it uh, to help grow new crops. Um, I think the increase in uh, chipping material on site and spreading it on site might serve that uh, to some degree, but frankly, we need to see more of this material composted because we know once it goes to a composting facility and we make a, a stable, nutrient-rich compost that has huge benefits. Um, I think there have been studies that have shown that uh, applying compost increases water holding capacity by 30%. Um, it decreases the need for uh, pesticides and fertilizers and herbicides. Um, there's been work out of the Marin Carbon Project uh, that's shown phenomenal rates of carbon sequestration from applying finished compost. So there are all these huge benefits. And on top of that, you know, if the alternative is open burning or even biomass or a landfill, all of those have significant impacts. Um, that said, uh, biomass does become a better alternative than open burning and so it's important to I, th I think we want to make sure that we uh, compost as much material as possible but the sweaty material takes a long time to break down so it takes a long time to go through a composting facility um, and so it is important that the material that can't be composted not be open burned because that has significant black carbon implications uh, and, and as far as policy I think uh, Frankly, we should prohibit the open burning and landfilling of any organic matter in the state of California. Um, there really should not be any exceptions for that. And I know the, the Valley Air District has a rule, but as you mentioned, they do give permits for some people to open burn. Um, and similarly, it should not be legal to landfill organic waste. Uh, there are 23 states that have a uh, ban on the landfilling of some organic materials and we should follow in their in their footsteps and ban the disposal of this material. So you said there's 23 other states and California is not, not one of them with that particular policy. Yeah, 23 states have banned the disposal of green waste. Mm -hmm. Most of these were in the 90s. Um, now California is beginning to consider moving in those footsteps under the state's uh, short-lived climate pollutant regulations, the super pollutants. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that uh, landfills are 20% of the state's methane emissions. And methane is 33 times more potent than CO2 as a greenhouse gas. And, uh, you know, we had the, the horrible disaster at Aliso Canyon in Southern California that released almost 100,000 tons of methane well, California's landfills release three times that amount every single year. And so the ARB is beginning to consider uh, how to end that practice of landfilling organic waste. Um, and they have a preliminary goal of uh, eliminating most of the landfilling of organic waste by 2025. Mm-hmm. Great, and I I just wanted to mention you 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 talked about how you know biomass is is definitely cleaner than than open burning, and that's something that we we agree with. We just don't you know think it should be the only um, 
solution here in, in the valley. Um, I was just talking to Jonicky uh, before the show about um, some of the concerns. Uh, even our air board members are concerned with um, uh, tree mortality in our local forests and and how that's being dealt with. Um, you know, we are always impacted by uh, forest fires, um, contributing to both ozone and particulate matter as we live in a, in a, in a valley here and um, really impacts our, our quality of life. So that's also something that, um, you know, I think the local uh, agencies are really concerned with and, and looking for kind of a, a multifaceted uh, a, approach to, to, to support growers and also um, deal with the, the, uh, the uh, tree mortality in our local forest. But with the biomass industry, I think we need to have a broader discussion as well because I've... I've learned that sometimes it encourages waste from other other regions, and I know that historically the valley has kind of played that role in that we we bring a lot of waste from the Bay Area and from from uh, Southern California to our valley, and so I think that's what a lot of the advocates are a little uh, you know fearful of that if we support uh, the biomass industry, it's it's going to encourage further waste um, from from other areas. So, um, like I said, you know we just need to have a an aggressive, multifaceted approach so that uh, it is long-term. Um, yeah, I, I, I would argue that there are several things we need to look for in any policy mm-hmm. that seeks to address the current situation, which is increased open burning. Um, I think any sort of support structure should be not limited just to the biomass combustion plants. It should be open to all end users of this material, so including composting facilities, if not at an advantage, at least on an equal playing field with the combustion facilities, but also anybody else. So uh, whether it's, uh, you know, a biofuel facility or some manufacturer that can use that product to make something else, they should be treated on an equal playing field. And then the other point I would make is that it should really be targeted towards ag materials that are likely to get uh, burned in the fields. I don't think you're going to have too many people in the solid waste hauling community that are going to be open burning their materials. So let's focus any incentives on on the 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 ones in the valley that are potentially uh, going to do open burning. Great, thanks, thanks, Nick and Neil. Do you want to close us out with some some uh, thoughts? We have only a couple of minutes left. I'm sorry we ran out of time with uh, this great discussion. Yeah, I I think there's. um there's still information that needs to be developed on what the impacts of, of orchard recycling are. Um, my understanding is that some of the projects that are, have been undertaken out there are going to gather some of that data. I don't know how much um, it doesn't have complete utility. A lot of the orchard removal is done on a cyclical basis for production reasons, but there's also a significant amount of orchard removal done for invasive pest reasons. And mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know that that is that, that's a suitable option for for those materials to be recycled back onto the land that they uh, originally stand on. I think it presents an opportunity, though, to um, find new avenues for this carbonaceous material, the wood that is produced. Um, we also have an overabundance of uh, nitrogen materials, waste materials in the valley. In particular, manure management is a... Mm-hmm particular concern to folks all over the valley and the nutrient migration that is uh comes from them and wood wood is an excellent combination with manure to produce compost feeds you know as a compost feedstock if they're blended together they can they can produce a a quality compost product it can solve a lot of the issues that are being presented by by having the success of manure, but like with the, all the other alternatives out there, these these things cost money to do. So manure right. has traditionally been managed at the lowest cost option, and um, you know, getting this wood process delivered and to facilities where where you could co-compost the material would be a one opportunity. Great. Thank you. Thank you all three. I'm so sorry we ran out of time, but I will 
be reaching out to all of you. I think this is an important conversation for us to, to continue having. So you've been listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. I'm your host, Dolores Weller, and we will hear from you next month. Bye-bye.